the Bible has no place for a tyrannical anthropocentrism unconcerned for other creatures. I'm Diane Brigant, the Carol Stuhl Muller Distinguished Professor Emerita of Old Testament Studies at Catholic Theological Union. Try to get that on a business card. The, the passage that I read to you comes from the Pope's document, Laudato Si, and I think that it is probably the most fundamental issue of the whole question, not only of climate change, not only of this document, but of the whole issue of integrity of creation. It speaks about the Bible, that the Bible does not have a tyrannical anthropocentrism. It's impossible for us not to be anthropocentric, meaning everything is judged from a human point of view. The adjective that he uses, though, a, a tyrannical anthropocentrism, really suggests what I think is in the mentality of a lot of people, and that is that God made a wonderful world, made human beings the most important creature in that world, and gave the rest of the world to human beings to do with what they please, or what will benefit them. That's tyrannical anthropocentrism. And I think it's important that the document says the Bible does not have it because most people will use a passage from the Bible to justify a tyrannical anthropocentrism. And that's a passage from Genesis creation narrative, the Genesis 1 creation narrative, where God makes the man and the woman in the image of God and then says, subdue and have dominion. And that's the word, or the words, subdue and have dominion. Now we all know that when we read something or we hear people talk, if we're going to really understand what they're saying, we have to put that or their words in the proper context. And so that same thing with the Bible, we have to put it within the proper context. And the context of this particular passage must be understood from the ancient understanding of image of God. Many people today think of the image of God as the human soul. There's, there are centuries of interpretation of that particular concept, image of God. But if we go back into the ancient world, we discover that people, we know this is true about people in the ancient Near East, they made images, some kind of a physical representation of both their God and their king. And in a certain sense, the God and the king were pretty much the same. So it's an image of the God and the king, not the God or the king. So the human beings were not king. I mean, were not gods. They were kings, representatives of God. And they were to subdue and have dominion as God would. We go into Genesis 3 and we discover they weren't satisfied being human beings. The text doesn't say it, but they were not satisfied being images of God, they wanted to be God. The text says that in Genesis 3. So what we have in that passage is a concept of human beings, perhaps royalty, but they were to represent how God is to act, and God certainly would not act to destroy, to pollute the world that he made. Consequently, when we talk about subduing and have dominion, we must do it with the same kind of concern that God has. If we don't, we are guilty of the anthropocentrism, the tyrannical anthropocentrism that the Holy Father talks about and that he says the Bible is against. This has been a presentation of Catholic Theological Union. For additional videos and podcasts or to learn more, please visit www.ctu.edu or visit learn.ctu.edu.